Hello, my crafting friends. Welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Today, I'm going to be sharing a project that features one of my favorite new stamp sets from the current Stampin' Up! mini catalog. We'll be doing some heat embossing and creating a watercolor wash on what I'm calling my Nature's Harvest Sunrise. I love this simple yet gorgeous card and hope you do too. So let's get started. So let's start by taking a quick look at the card. Plus, I'd also like to let you know that this is one of three current Stamp Club projects. Stamp Club members get a free class to go every other month, complete with project kits in the mail, to make two each of three different designs. Club members also get free Stampin' Up! products from me at the end of the club cycle. Plus, you can sign up anytime to join a club. For details about my online Stampers Club program, make sure to check out the link in the video description below. So for this project, we're using Nature's Harvest, so that image there, and then we're using one of the sentiments in the set, um, uh, one that I love. And we'll go ahead and stamp the sentiment. It's in a, on a long, thin strip. This color is soft sea foam, and we're gonna stamp it in pear pizzazz, so it's just um, a little bit darker tone on the light green. And it is a tight squeeze, which um, sometimes is, to your advantage because you really don't have leeway to do it in the wrong spot if you're going to be right over the paper so miracle i actually just did that exactly where it needed to be so that's the sentiment piece and then for my main piece i'm going to start with my heat embossing so i'm going to do my embossing buddy now this i'm going to stamp a little bit higher because when I was doing the sentiment, when I was putting this one together, I felt like I was covering up too much of the image and I wanted to see more of the flowers. So I'm gonna go a smidge higher um, when I do my stamping card. So as you can see here, this is a big image, so I'm actually inking it up the opposite way where I put the stamp face mm -hmm. up. It's just a little bit easier to do that. And I'm only gonna stamp one image and I'm doing it at a slight angle. And again, a little bit higher than the first time around. All right, so I got my white embossing powder. And I'm just gonna go ahead and heat emboss that. See if it's all, all the powder is heated. And it looks like it is. So, I'm gonna grab my paper towel. And then I'm just gonna do a watercolor wash. So I'm gonna start with spraying my paper with some water just to make sure it's really wet. And I'm gonna even go over it with my water painter just to make sure it's all covered. Um, if it's not, then sometimes what'll happen is the ink will get stuck in spots and like a blotch, you know. So I'm gonna start with my light color. So I've got a little palette of petal pink right there and that's the Calypso Coral. So the petal pink is at the top it's actually um, uh, sort of a peachy. I tried a couple different color combinations with this, which I'll tell you, but this was the one that I did on the final and liked it the most. But you could also use um, something like uh, pumpkin pie or mango melody if you want more of an orangey kind of um, background at the top. And then what I like to do is go in with a little bit of my Calypso Coral around the flower. And then I'm adding a little bit of water just to kind of blend it so it doesn't look so, quite so obvious that I sort of colored around it. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the dark at the bottom. And when it dries, it'll kind of take on a different look as well. It sort of changes as it dries. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a light little heat to dry it and um, just move things along more quickly. And I'll show you what I did next. You guys know ink will sit on the surface of what's heat embossed, so after I do this, I'm gonna just rub off the surface a little bit just to make sure there's no ink sitting on the white embossing. There we go with that. Now the other thing that you can do with this one that I like to do is um, you know, squeeze a little bit of water out of the tip of the aqua painter or the water painter, and then just do that flicky thing. And this'll actually remove the ink wherever 
you put the water. So it just adds some additional sort of texture to it. So if I just go like that, you can see it uh, removed the ink. And now I got the body of my card. It's just the four and a quarter by 11, fold it in half. And I've dry embossed a piece of white cardstock with the tasteful textile embossing folder. And this is, I think it's three by five, but it is done for everybody. And it's just gonna get attached at the top of the paper. I'm just gonna use white adhesive, the liquid glue here, just because it's easy and quick. As long as you don't go towards the edge of the paper, it won't ooze out. I'll hold it down. And then I've got some twine. And it's really long because I'm wrapping it around four times and then tying a bow. So I'm gonna open it up and then just start wrapping. I'll adjust my position. Uh, this is actually super long. And then I'm just gonna tie a bow. If you wanna start with a knot, you can do that. Make sure it stays tight. Um, that's probably a good idea, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have the bow off to the left, so there's room for the sentiment. So yeah, definitely tie the knot and then the bow because it's just easier to get it tight. And then I like to have on this some nice long tails. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add adhesive to the back and go ahead and attach it to the card. This is one of those rare cards where I don't actually have a layer in behind it. So this is gonna get tucked under the ribbon. Um, so just, uh, just a little bit. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of the uh, dry embossing showing on the right. And I do have it justified up. I may adjust my ribbon to kind of get the positioning where I want it, or the thread, I should say. I have the thread so that it's sort of underlining the bottom of the focal piece. All right, and then I've got my sentiment, and this is my last step. And what I did was uh, just put some mini dimensionals uh, on the back. I'm kind of trying to straddle the, um, the thread just a bit. So I'm gonna put my mini dimensionals at the top and bottom in a few spots. See how that works. So just like, like that. Your paper piercing tool can work nicely to remove those backings. So I wanna see some of that twine on the right. And that's why the bow of course is all the way over there on the left. And there you go. As you can see here, each focal piece that you do is gonna turn out different based upon how you do your watercolor wash. That's part of the fun of this technique. Now, if you've received a kit in the mail to make this project, I've included an extra piece of soft seafoam cardstock that's bigger so that you can cut it down to size and use whatever sentiment you have on hand. Now to create my Nature's Harvest Sunrise, I played around with a variety of different colors uh, and I'm showing you here an alternative to what I did on my card. This one is Mango Melody at the top there on that strip and Calypso Coral right there in the middle next to my thumb. I also experimented with some pinks for this and that one you see there is polished pink, super bright pink. So I opted away from that, but whatever colors um, get you excited is what you should use. Now I also played around with uh, pumpkin pie and calypso coral. So on this one, pumpkin pie is shown at the top and calypso coral at the bottom. And then of course, what I actually used for today's project is petal pink at the top and calypso coral at the bottom. So have some fun and experiment and make your sunrise whatever you want it to be. As a reminder, this is one of three of the current Stampers Club projects. If you'd like to receive free classes to go in the mail, plus free Stampin' Up! products, you may want to join my online Stampers Club.
To learn more, click on the little I in the upper right hand corner of your screen or click on the link in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed my project today and I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for spending some time with me today, and happy crafting!